Hello everyone, this is Eth Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So here we have this interesting team here. It is, it is a pretty scary team if you don't look at it carefully at first. It is infantry pulse with ground orders. Pretty darn heavy merges on a good chunk of these units. And well, we're gonna have to do some stuff, <laughs> to say the least, if we want to win this cleanly. We definitely have the damage output. That I'm not concerned about. The issue is getting the damage where we need it, when we need it, because uh, the problem is Mirablos here is chilling in the back as the seventh slot unit with ground orders and aerobatics plus wings and mercy. So I'm kind of thinking we actually just want to keep the healing tower alive so we don't have to worry about wings and mercy memes. But at the same time, it's like maybe we should Keep the chip damage so more units can pick up kills where we need it but yeah for example um winter altina is the largest struggle here luan's going to be a struggle in terms of uh actually <laughs> actually not having a unit die to him because well it's luan with forsetti's refines pretty devastating um of course, Regan can take him down, you know, Ultina player phasing can take him down, but yeah, not trivial. I think we're just going to go for a goofball freestyle play. Don't usually do this a lot in Aetherids, but because we are in a week where we can't actually, uh, we're not even bothering to try and stay in Vault, we, we, we do whatever we want. <laughs> So my play is to break this duo's hindrance using Regan's Kanto. We have to do it very quickly because, of course, we only get four turns of Kanto. But the problem is we have to break all these structures here because the plan is to break of Kanto. Then we have to go back here, dance with Rayson, and dance with Rayson from here and Repo. Because we're going to smite up Regan from here. I guess technically we don't need to do such things except for ground orders. The main thing is ground orders because Altina, Theros, and Lift are all just going to move in pretty predictable ways. And because of ground orders, you know, anyone in this area gets sniped down by Innis, which is uh, not what we want. So, yeah, we, we, we kind of have to be very quick about breaking structures here. So I'm thinking we don't even bother breaking the tactics room. We'll just regret our life decisions later. And we'll just go for it here. I think we'll probably want to use... Let's use Veronica to snipe down the Dark Shrine real quick. I guess that means she gets hit by tactics room, but I don't really care. Uh, let's just freestyle it. We also will be using Julia to bait Micaiah. It's an easy one shot for legendary Julia because uh, she's she uh, she probably straight up even gets 100 attack by herself. So weapon triangle makes it trivial. The only problem is we take a good chunk of damage. What is that? 67, 65 from light and dark. So that's 52. Okay, maybe not. We're not going to take too much damage. So I guess the problem is Iceberg's at one cooldown, which is not ideal. But uh, we'll worry about that later. So let's see. I think we just want to break this. Then I guess what we could do instead is something like this. Then reposition with Ragan and break this. Seems fine. So now we're going to go for the turn three. Uh, snipe down the duo's hindrance play. Do we want to bait that same turn? Uh, good question. So the thing about this bait is that Mirabliss is just going to hit end turn. So she's not actually going to dance. So everything becomes relatively predictable. You know, it probably expects something along the lines of this, this, this. This, this, I mean, it's it's rel pretty predictable. I mean, Luan can go to the left if he wants to, and Mirabliss is going to go sit in place, which is uh, kind of bad for us, <laughs> uh, because Luan's in the back. 
But I am thinking we just go ahead and get set up for the bait, I think. I Seems fine. I, will do what I, can. I guess I didn't... I don't have Unity up, uh, or Oaf up on Julia, so I'll probably use Altina to proc that for us. Uh, seems okay. And of course we're doing the Don't Activate Traps challenge still because we're we're very intelligent, Kappa. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's gonna be interesting. Let's do this. This do we wanna break the ether structure or the tactics room? I really like breaking the tactics room here, but I, I feel like ether structure is just smarter. But then again, Mirabilis is going to be last, so maybe it's just best uh it's tough to say. I think Tactics Room is probably best here. So if Regan breaks this, we need Race and be able to reach here. So we can do this, 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 this. I guess we can... Okay, sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, I guess that's not optimal in terms of placement for the following turn, but uh, we'll worry about that when we get there. I was contemplating using, uh, whatchamacallit. Yeah, there's no... There's no Wings of Mercy that could possibly screw us over, right? Cap. <laughs> Cap. Um... I think we just put Veronica here is okay. This is a terrible spot to be in because of Innis. Uh, I mean, it's not a terrible spot because of Innis, but... <laughs> We're gonna regret our life decisions later. Uh, I think we just keep Ultina here. There's no real threat because again, Mirabliss is gonna hit end turn. Unless I'm mistaken, we screw ourselves over, but let's see what we get here. There's a healing tower. End turn as expected. Pretty much expecting the movement I said. Yeah, like literally exactly textbook what I said. <laughs> So now the problem is this dude has ground orders and Mirabilis is going to dance, so someone's probably dying here. Uh, Over here? We do have Kanto, but the problem is Lyft just survives stuff. And I know no one's killing Ultina in one shots here. Lewin's just gonna obliterate uh, Altina, because she's a well not in vantage range. <laughs> okay, so what's the fundamental problem? Luan getting danced, that's literally it. If only there was a way we could bait Luan, but that's a no, that's not happening. Which means Ground Orders is going to terrorize us, comboed with Altina. Um, I think we almost always have to take out Innis. I could be incorrect about that. Maybe it's actually just best to bait with like... There's no way Ultina survives a shot. We can calc it though. Uh, don't quite get the kill on Lyft. We need to hit and turn with two units, which we can 100% do to pick up that kill. And then from there, Regan is outside of wings range, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. That probably seems like the best play in the book. Uh, obviously, lifts on a defense tile, so not great for us here. So let's calc to see if it's actually possible for uh, Altina to survive Innis. I'm guessing the answer is no, but you gotta be sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um... And then in that case, we can have her also in range to, you know, bait out uh, Lewin in the chance that Altina decides to move down. I'm pretty sure it's going this, she's going this way, so we'll have to be careful about that. Um, Innis. I guess the first, the, actually the primary question is, do we even kill? Uh, that's, the, that's the better question. So, 39, 62, yeah, we, we definitely kill. We just gotta not die, forehead. Um, so, start of combat at 6, so that's 70 attack. Consider it done. 70 attack. I just noticed they don't have bonus structure up. That's why I was like, why is Altina's defense so high, Kappa? <laughs> uh, 70. 
Okay, we gotta write this down. Uh, seven points from just rocking the special. 70 attack. How much is Ruptured Sky doing? I guess... Let's see here. If we get a max form up, that, that's just best for us. But I don't think we're getting max form up. Probably only getting a uh, plus three. Maybe plus five if we're greedy. <laughs> I don't I don't know why we would be greedy about that. But plus five is an option. With utter certainty. So 44. Um, wait, yeah, I think I'm 44, 50 if we don't have Julia next her. 50 defense. Um, okay, so it's 27 already. Ruptured Sky cannot do that much damage, can it? 65. Uh, Sixty-five, sixty-eight. So ruptured sky does how much? <laughs> twenty percent of that. What is twenty percent of that? Thirteen. Something like that. Thirteen points. So that's twenty-seven forty. So we don't die. Okay. Progress. <laughs> um, I guess my only gripe here is probably banging out Lewin, right? I guess we can do this. Um, his ruptured sky scaling is worse than attack defense form scaling. Um, if we have two units in range of form, which we most definitely can if we place uh, Altina here, then uh, what are we doing here? Wait, 41, 47, 52, that's 52 defense, that's 18, 725, yeah. So that scaling's fine. Is there something I'm overlooking? Doesn't seem like it. What could possibly go wrong, forehead? So this double end turn allows us to pick up this kill here. We're always going to attack from there. Now the question is, how do we want to position our units? I think Naga 2 down just seems okay here. Uh, Altina's actually probably just going way to the left, if I were to guess. So that's probably not good for us here. Let's do this. Retain dragon effectiveness, I guess. Um, is there anything we need to watch out in terms of Luin's range? So, his max range is teleporting off of Altina, which means we're okay to just do this, right? Yeah. And then we just do this, hit and turn. I guess Alt er, Veronica is also buffing Innis' attack. So, yep, all that calced out. And here's our vantage bait on Lewin that I purposefully set up there. And now at this point we have to deal with Altina. I think it should be relatively easy because we have Veronica, we have Julia. Uh, Julia even has Unity ready, so let's just see if she can pick up the one shot. Yeah, <laughs> I figured with Unity. We're trying out attack defense Unity this week over Mirror Impact. Kind of liking it, not gonna lie. Uh, and then we just clean up and GG. Should be pretty straightforward at this point. We can smite up to Yoink that. And then now we flex, uh, because why wouldn't we flex, Kappa? Um, so let's do this, 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 and flex. For the SP, heck yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, pretty clean clear. Didn't need to use bolt tower damage that, that much. It wasn't too relevant here. Uh, I guess it was relevant against Lyft, wasn't? Probably. <laughs> it was probably relevant. Uh, we, we had we had other options if you know we didn't kill um, aka runaway <laughs> the most optimal play in the book runaway but yeah we're not using a bonus unit so there's just no possible way for us to make tier 38 even if we had a completely perfect season so yeah we're just goofballing around 
And well, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!